Okay, my name is Akashi guys and in this video here, I'm going to be giving you guys everything I'm going to be doing to save Chrono Crystals to get to the 6th anniversary. Now it's not just going to be the typical, oh, to get Chrono Crystal do this, this and this. I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks, some guides to make sure that I'm saving in the most efficient way possible. Because of course on my channel already, I already have some Chrono Crystal guides that you could use if you just want to stack up your Chrono Crystals in that case you wanted to spend it. But in this case, we're talking about saving. So hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this video, man. Let's get straight into this. One thing before we get into this video, I just want to give you guys the big information that even if you do everything in the game without playing PvP, you can get a total of 40,000 Chrono Crystal minimum as long as you're doing everything so TLP going forward to every event da, 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 da. you're playing all of the options in the game you can get up to 40,000 chrono crystals without PvP that's a large amount if you start from now so that's your sign if you don't listen to this you're cooked buddy but enjoy the video now one of my most asked questions is why don't I claim my Z missions now this is for the free to plays right if you don't claim your Z missions it will help you in the long run because you won't get to 20,000 fast now you might be thinking, I want to get to 20,000 fast because I want to be saving. Of course you do, but there's a way about it. The reason you don't want to get through 20,000 with your Z missions is because the Z missions don't expire. And on top of that, if you don't know, when you get to 20,000 Chrono Crystals, you are unable to claim any Exchange Shop Chrono Crystals. So if I go to my menu, then I go to Exchange Shop, any Chrono Crystals in this Exchange Shop, wherever it is, so Legends Battle Royale, you see how I, if I had the coins, I'd be able to exchange for this. If I had 20,000 Chrono Crystals or above, I would not be able to claim it. Now, again, going back to the Z missions, because they don't expire, there's no reason to claim them in a hurry. So I have all these missions here that have been pending since maybe last year's summer, simply because they have no expiry date. So there's no reason to claim them, especially when I'm saving. It's Especially because you want to get all the Chrono Crystals in the exchange shop too. Imagine being above 20,000 so fast, you want to get 1,000 Chrono Crystals from the raid exchange shop, but you can't because you've already hit 20,000. So my advice is to not claim your Z missions. But on top of that, there's other missions that don't expire, such as the more Legends missions. Generally speaking, don't bother claiming those until you plan to spend them because they will not expire. I know it's quite annoying to look at for some of you guys. I'm super used to it. Some guys are looking at this like, oh, please, Zach, please, please, please claim it. It's, it's annoying me. Bro, it's not going to har harm you. It's just at plus 99 on the, the mission section. Uh, obviously, the mission plan I'm going to claim, but that's besides the point. The Z missions alone, you don't need to claim them. And these, I only don't claim them because they give you adventures. So I wait until the last day. So yeah, just the Z missions and the more missions on the right, don't claim them, they don't expire and you don't want to get to 20,000 fast because you're saving for the long run, not the short run. Now another little trick that I'm going to be applying, do not play the story mode. In the same way I'm not claiming my mission from the Z missions, do not play the story mode because the story mode's always going to be there. Unlike some events in the game, so if you go to the mission at the menu, then you go to event, there's events here that expire. They don't stay forever. For example, these two here disappear in two days, so I would play them and get the Chrono Crystals that I can get from them. In the recommended, some of these things here, they, ex they expire. They're not going to be here forever, so you want to take advantage of them while they're here. But the story mode is permanently there. So I'm not saying if you're like at chapter one, don't play it. But what I want to say is, when you're trying to get to 20,000, again with the 20,000 Chrono Crystal cap, because you can't claim exchange shop Chrono Crystals uh, when you're above 20,000 Chrono Crystals, if you play the story mode, you'd be obtaining Chrono Crystals that you can do whenever. So it's more beneficial to do the story mode way later into the time net when we're near the anniversary than now because if you grind through it now you might get to 20,000 in the same day then you won't be able to claim any exchange shop chrono crystals so what i advise is hold out on the story mode just leave it there it's gonna stack up when we get to about maybe a week or two before the anniversary then you want to play through all the story mode and in the same way that you would have got the chrono crystals you just have them for later but you wouldn't have missed out of, on any of the exchange shop chrono crystals because it doesn't expire, no reason to rush and play it. You can play it whenever, and it's best to play it later, going closer to the anniversary. On top of that, story mode gives you so much Chrono Crystals, man. But because you're not spending it, it will also help you in that regard. So you have no reason to spend it. There's also no reason to hold it. So you could just keep it in the story section unplayed, and then play it closer to the anniversary, not now. Even in the anniversary, depending on if you like part one or not, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm not going to be touching the story mode until maybe the middle of May or something, late May. So yeah, that's number two. I won't be touching the story mode. This should also go without saying, but make sure to do everything. 
and I mean everything. If you're not consistent, you're not going to get everything out of this game. And when it gets to the anniversary, you won't be on track with everybody that has a lot of Chrono Crystals. There's all these events here, so make sure to do the raid in the exchange shop. You can get Chrono Crystals. I think Full Power Battle gives you Chrono Crystals, but don't quote me on that. Obviously, the Fierce Fight for uh, Broly Battle, make sure to do all of these. There's not a lot, but you can get Chrono Crystals out of them. What else is here? scrolling down i think for the first time clears you get chrono crystals out of these sometimes the rush battle does the original series you don't need to rush for these bottom ones they're similar to the story mode because they don't expire but these two for sure the upgrades most of them don't give you chrono crystals but maybe for your first time clear and then going down there's also these ones here these do not expire so you could also do them later if you want to maximize your profits from getting the exchange shop chrono crystals missions that expire events that expire etc etc focus on expiry it's like the milk in your fridge you gotta use use it before it gets to the expiry date but if milk had infinite lifespan you would just hold it there in the fridge you wouldn't be too fussed about using it as much i know some some of you guys parents be nagging you about things that be expiring it's just the same way in the game it's literally just the way of life no matter where you go things expire so you need to work towards it man but yeah just naturally going and saying play everything tournament power especially um if you want any tournament power help definitely join my discord server it's on the screen right below me it's in the description join the discord it has tournament power guide that can help you easily get the 1000 chrono crystals every two weeks you just need a decent team some decent equips obviously it's going to take a bit of time but if it's guaranteeing you a thousand chrono crystals even more than that every single week because if you scroll to the top right you even get i believe 300 for clearing it i think you get 200 in the missions and then you get the 1000 for um getting the, the certain percentage in the world then you also get an extra 100 for just your point rank so that's a bunch of chrono crystals just off top now i just want to point out even though pvp is an option it's much more difficult to get the 1k cc i will say especially to someone new to the game so what i'm going to say for this part here even if you don't want to play pvp right just take it take take in your mind you can still get 40,000 chrono crystals by the anniversary so you start saving from now without pvp which is crazy so you don't even need to play PvP. Well, of course, you can also get 1,000 Chrono Crystals every single two weeks through playing PvP. So if you can, if you have one good team, you can keep up with people playing PvP in the meta and you're decently good at the game, you can easily hit top 10,000 in the world, enabling you to get 1,000 Chrono Crystals every two weeks. That should go without saying. Of course, like I said before, don't be doing the story mode or anything that doesn't expire because there's no rush and you don't want to put yourself at a bad position, especially when trying to get Exchange Shop CC because of the 20,000 Chrono Crystal cap. So yeah, that's number three. Just make sure you're doing everything that you can. Right, so I feel it's only fair that I put out this pay to win section because of course I'm not free to play, but I want to emphasize that. But going back to last year when I was saving for Ultra Vegito Blue, I was going to 50,000 Chrono Crystals. A lot of people were hating on the fact that I got to 50,000 Chrono Crystals just saying, oh, he's paid to win. He just bought everything. But a lot of people don't know back in those days, if you got past 20,000 in the same way you can't claim from the exchange shop, you couldn't buy from the pay to win shop. So this shop here where I can spend my real life money, right? Now you can. So if I wanted to, I could buy all the Chrono Crystals to get to 200,000. I believe 200,000 is the new cap, which is a ridiculous amount, which you really don't need to get to that amount. So if I got like 50,000 Chrono Crystals tomorrow, it's obvious that I spent Chrono Crystals because that's ridiculous, you know, unless I was a new account. And even then, it's still kind of ridiculous because you had to grind all day. You could obviously tell the person spent money. But of course, I'm going to be keeping myself at a low. So I'm going to be trying to do everything as free to play as possible. But in this section here, I'm going to tell you what I do pay for and what I will be buying as I go through the months. So what I do buy, the, the two things I love to buy are the digger robots, the silver one and the red one or orange, depending on how your eyes work. I like those digger robots because you gradually get Chrono Crystals every single day. I'm going to be getting, I believe, a minimum of like 150, which is not bad. But I like to get this because on a certain times for events and showcase, etc, etc. I need the energy. I'll be real. Look at me at 79 energy. That is tragic. But of course, for 500 energy, you can use 100 Chrono Crystals. So that's one of my reasons to be buying the Digger Robots. But in general, it's also just a good way to accumulate Chrono Crystals gradually. If you also combine this with the fact that I'm purposely not doing the story mode to avoid 20,000, this is also getting me to 20,000 faster. So it's kind of just like an extra pocket that I can spend for content purposes. Of course, I'm a content creator, but it will also help me in the saving process nonetheless. Outside of this, I also buy the mission plan. The mission plan 
is also very very effective i believe if you don't buy the mission plan if you have the battle lovers plan you can get 500 chrono crystals every two weeks but if you pay for it you can get 1500 extra which obviously equates to 2000 chrono crystals which is a good amount as well also helps you get to 20,000 faster which is not exactly what you want but getting more is always better the other thing i would probably buy and obviously it's not going to be there consistently but at the beginning of every month, there's like a 1000 Chrono Crystal pack. I like to buy those, use those for content as well. And when a banner releases, there's also the 1000 uh, 1, Chrono Crystal pack every time they drop a premium banner. And I believe there's also the Step Up Chrono Crystal sale. Those are the like the cheapest things anyways. There's a lot of these sales here that are super, super pricey. Like the monthly pack, 40,000 Chrono Crystals. I mean, 40, uh, 40 pounds for 3000 Chrono Crystals, I believe. This one here you can see is 2,000 Chrono Crystals, 20 pounds. These are a lot more pricey. It's not like anything's free anyways. You're still spending money, but I feel like I should just be very honest, especially when I'm saving with you guys. So if my amount is just way higher than you guys, it's mainly because of the mission plan, the digger robots, and those monthly sales, as well as the premium banner sales. Those will be the main four things that I'll be purchasing just to put it out there. So if you see my Chrono Crystals go up higher than yours, that's why. But for the most part, I'm keeping it free to play not using the story mode anything that doesn't expire not playing it going to be taking it steady just claiming from missions that be expiring and the events that they put out every week or two weeks now this is going to be the last section of this video a lot of people would be curious on what would make me summon or am i going to be skipping absolutely everything and i'm going to be honest with you i will not be skipping everything saving i'll be getting to the anniversary to have a large amount of chrono crystals my aim is thirty thousand. But if you guys do not spend on any banner and you don't even play PvP, you can still get 40,000 Chrono Crystals. So I don't feel like it's ridiculous to not spend like... I don't think it's ridiculous to spend on some of the banners, basically. There are some things that will make me summon. 100% every time a limit break comes out, I will be summoning. I feel like the Z power is too valuable to miss out. It's 5,000 Chrono Crystals for a limit break, basically. And you can get, I believe, 1,200 Z power or 1,000 Z power. LL Legend Limited Z power, to be specific. So that's super good. I'll be putting that into Bardock and Goku. I'm investing in the Legends Original Series. But before that, uh, let me just change my setting. So I'll put on Sparking. Then I'll scroll down to Legend Limited. I'll be spending on my, my Z power on Super 17, right? So what I intend to do... Every time I can get 100 LLZ power from like the exchange shops for certain events, I'll be trying to get it up to 8,800. And then if I get 1,200 from the limit break, I can 14 star Super 17. That's This is my personal endeavor. After I do that, all my Z power will be going into Bardock and Goku because I'm investing in the Legends Original Series. I do have other good units that I could 14 star if I wanted to. For example, Red Beast. A lot of people wanted me to put Z power into him, but I felt he was just so good. There's no reason to get him that extra. I already had him at 9 stars, got him to 10 stars through the New Year's Rising banner. And there's some other good units that I have that I might want to Z power, but I'm just not going to go for. Some Most of them will be on banners that I summon on. More reason why I'm specifically choosing Super 17. The banners I would summon on, like I said, the limit break, I didn't get to the next ones, but there will be Fusion Warriors. If they drop a LL Kefla, I'm there. Immediately. If they drop a Gotenks, I'm there. Immediately. There's just some exceptions I have to make. Vegetos, Gogetas, no matter what, I have to be there. I'm a Fusion guy. But with Super 17, I feel like he won't return on a Fusion Warrior banner. He would return on an Android banner. And I won't most likely won't summon on an Android banner, so I won't be able to get Z power off of him on banners that I would like to summon on, which is why I'm Z powering him first over Bardock and Goku. But I feel like Bardock and Goku is more likely to return on a Sun Family banner, Goku banner, anything that is like hero equivalent or the main character cast or equivalent. So I'll be more likely to get Z power off them, which is why I'm holding them back just a tiny bit. But that's my thought process for Z power. But just going back to banners that I will summon on, I already spoke about the limit break. Fusion Warriors will have to get it. And in some occasions, maybe Goku's. But that's pretty much, that could be every single month, you know. Right now, we're thankfully in the powerful opponent campaign, looming Nemesis's campaign, whatever you want to call it. So, I'm not expecting anything that I need to summon on. Super Baby 2, easy skip for me. I'm sure he was for a lot of you guys as well. But maybe they'll drop a freezer. Easy skip for me. But for some of you guys, it might not be. So, I'm not saying don't summon. There are things you can summon for and still be good for the anniversary. But for the most part, you've got to be saving. And me being realistic about it, I know I'm not going to skip everything, which is why I'm making this video. So I have a reference point. So someone can be like, I thought you said you wasn't going to summon. I never said that. 
this video is here so I can be honest and I got the track record of what I've been doing. But on top of that, just giving you guys the advice you need so you don't have to feel like, oh, this is a hard skip. Duh, 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 duh. It just is what it is. You know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. One thing I forgot to touch on was rerun banners so i spoke on limit breaks i fought, spoke on the banners i would summon on but rerun banners so in this case we got ultra gold gear blue right ultra gold gear blue i feel like he's an easy skip and should be for everybody but there are some rerun banners i genuinely think could be worth it ultra gohan if he reruns in the next two months he could be the best bait before the anniversary but of course i think they're going to drop an anniversary i uh, drop an ultra before the anniversary as well so just bear that in mind but I feel like Ultra Gohan is the most valuable rerun they could drop. And if he does, a lot of people will summon for him. Ultra UI could also be a valuable one as well. Those two more than anybody, a lot of people would summon for, I think. Third one, if it's me, I'd put it between Ultra Vegito Blue and Janemba. I'd say those three, four, in a sense, would be the most valuable reruns. But everybody else, if I actually just go to the Ultra section, just to make sure I'm not missing anybody, I think wouldn't be worth it. So let me actually just change the settings. Yeah, pretty much Ultra Vegito Blue, Gohan, UI, and possibly Janemba. I don't really care about Janemba. Easy skip for me. I think he's overrated, but he could fit the team that you might want to run. So that's just something to put out for you guys. But in general, I'd say avoid reruns, except maybe Gohan. Gohan is actually absurd with the fact that Son Family and Hybrid Saiyans are just consistently overpowered. But yeah, that's my segment for reruns. But yeah, man, that's going to be the end of the video. Hopefully the video was useful. I feel like I had I feel like I had to make this video because last year I didn't do a video like this. But a lot of people ask me these questions. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I spending on? What would I be buying? P pay to win, free to play. All these questions were answered in this video. So let me know if this video was useful. Appreciate you guys for watching the video, man. Press the subscribe button. We're on this grind to 100,000 subscribers. My name's Akashi, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one, man.